Well, question four. In my Christian education, mm -hmm. I learnt that sacrament and ritual were a way in which we could actually demonstrate the feelings that were deep within the heart and bring them, act them through your body. Yep. And um, I just wondered what your comment was on this. Yeah, it's interesting, sacrament and ritual, isn't it? As a, um, and if maybe you'd like to define sacrament for the people who... who... Well, it's a... It's a um, it's a visible sign of God's love coming to that person. Yeah. But really, I know having... But really, it's connected to even the blood, the wine and the bread and all of those kind of things too, isn't it, to a degree? To and a it's, degree, it's yeah. It's also connected to other belief systems, isn't And it? it's connected to other belief systems. And it also depends on the condition of the person receiving the sacrament. Because okay. having been involved with it... I'd say 90% haven't got a clue and don't care. Yeah. Whereas you might have 10% who really honestly feel want it to as connect. a ritual. Yes. Like feel it feel as a ritual. Feel that feeling. desire. Yeah. 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 And, and for the majority of people, ritual has become commonplace. Mm. And as a result of ritual becoming commonplace, of course, there is no heart in it. Mm. And when mm. there is no heart in anything, mm. of course, it has no benefit to the mm. soul whatsoever. Mm. So that's the first thing I would like to say mm. in response to the question. When there is no heart involved in anything, mm. then of course there is no soul-based response in, in, the, in the thing being practised and therefore it is of no benefit whatsoever to the person practising mm. it. Obviously, so a yes. person who practises sacrament or ritual without there being any heart in it is, a point, is, a, is of complete mm. uselessness mm. to them, mm. of no benefit whatsoever. But let's look at the heart in it and just see what, how this applies. Now, what happens many times for people involved with sacrament and ritual is that spirits who are also loving the sacrament and ritual um, are involved in, in motivating the heart of the person mm. into the sacrament and ritual through experience, mm -hmm. through an experience. So in other words, because, let's say, for example, as a, as a scenario, I decide that that I would like to be involved in a certain ritual of the church. There's a spirit with me who feels very strongly that that ritual of the church helps them and, and will help me get closer to God. And so the spirit gives me feelings, mm. tingling sensations and other feelings from the spirit to myself. And usually when we feel it, we'll feel it enter us through the, the back of our... So, and, and it causes me to have an opening of my heart towards this ritual being a part of my worship of God. In the process of this worship of God, uh, my heart opens up towards God. Mm -hmm. As a result of my heart opening up towards God and my desire for God's love to enter my soul, God's love now starts entering my soul and I feel the tingling sensation over all of my body and a beautiful happiness and feeling of love and so forth that enters me as a result of that particular experience. Now, the problem with all of that is this. I then join the ritual with the final experience. Does that mm, make sense? I see. I then associate the ritual and mm. I tell myself inside of myself, I tell myself that the reason why I had this experience with God mm. was because I practiced the ritual. Mm. This gives me an emotional connection to the ritual mm as a means of experiencing God. Mm -hmm. Now, the reality is that I do not need a ritual to experience God. Mm. We only need the five things that I've mentioned yes. in, the pre in my previous question. Yes. But because I've now in my heart associated the ritual or the sacrament as leading me to this experience with God, I then associate a belief system that the ritual is essential mm to my continuing this experience with God. Mm. And this is where I now imbibe an untruth. Mm -hmm. Because what has really driven my experience with God was my open heart mm. and longing for that experience mm. with God, mm. not the ritual itself. Mm. The ritual helped me reach that condition through the mechanism of the ritual. But the ritual in itself yeah. will not work for every person. Of course. Because it's actually the 
feeling of opening my heart towards God that is the thing that operates, that draws the Holy Spirit as a connection and allows the love to flow. Mm. Until that point in time, I'm only experiencing an experience with a spirit who is also on the same path probably as myself, right. who also has very similar belief systems to myself. Now, if I become addicted to that relationship, I'm actually being distracted from God. Mm -hmm. And what I find a lot of people do is they have this, in, uh, this ritual in the first instance. They connect with God through this ritual because of the mechanism I've described. Then they believe the ritual is what connected them to God. Right. And then they engage the ritual and then the spirit keeps giving them the encouragement for the ritual as well. And instead what they're now developing is a relationship with the spirit and sometimes they have the feeling with God and sometimes they don't. Mm. And they don't understand why. Mm. They're engaging the ritual every time, but sometimes the ritual works. Yes. And other times the ritual doesn't. Yes. In other words, other times the ritual fails. But they don't look at that. They don't go, okay, today the ritual worked. Yesterday the ritual didn't work. What happened today mm. that was different than yesterday? Mm. Mm. And actually finish up seeing that it's something going on in their heart. Mm that happened that was differently that was different yesterday than today of course of course and also there is the aspect of truth that's involved if we hold on to rituals that reinforce false beliefs eventually the ritual will cause us to stagnate okay in other words we will no longer be able to experience the connection with god through the ritual at all ever mm. So we might receive divine love, receive divine love to a certain point where, the, where we're not facing a truth. And then we think ah, the answer see. is to engage the ritual more. Yeah. And the more we engage the ritual, we still can't receive divine love anymore mm. because we're not realising that it's not the ritual that caused the, or the lack of the ritual mm. that caused the operation of the Holy Spirit with our soul. It was our inability to understand the truth that's right sitting in front of us. Mm that has caused us to mm. now disconnect. So more and more of truth is what opens up that heart. It's exactly. The, it's a keep, you know, keep breaking the boundaries and looking for more and more truth. Exactly. So yeah. there is no harm in the ritual mm. if the ritual helps me connect to God. Yeah. But as soon as the ritual makes me believe that I don't need to face a truth mm. in order to connect to God, mm. now there is harm in the ritual. Mm. For sure. And this is the problem that we face with regard to our rituals. You see, eventually what happens in most religious faiths is the ritual becomes the observance without understanding the operation of the soul. Mm -hmm. And when we don't understand the operation of soul, we can't receive divine love. So we get involved more and more in the ritual, in the ritual, in the ritual, in the ritual. And eventually a ritual results in stagnation of, mm -hmm. our, of our progress towards mm -hmm. God because we're now trying to engage the ritual rather than engage truth yeah. and humility yeah. in our relationship with God. We're trying to engage the ritual to get the relationship with God. And God doesn't have relationships based on ritual. Mm. Is this what causes what they call dryness? Yeah, I feel you see it happening in a lot of religious faiths where you have that initial inflow mm. of the connection with love and therefore the connection with God's love entering the soul. And there's that initial deep enthusiasm for the mm. religion as a result, right? Mm. Which is an incorrect viewpoint in itself because it's not the religion that caused the inflow of love. It's your own openness mm. to God's love entering your own heart that mm. caused the inflow of love. Mm. But the religion assisted you in that process mm. through helping you understand some things, right? Now, when I engage the religion more and more and more, I then start believing that the religion is the cause of my relationship with God. And it's not. The cause of my relationship with God, stagnating or progressing, is completely dependent on three things. It's completely dependent on my longing for God's love to enter my soul, whether that's pure or not. It's completely dependent on whether I have a pure desire for divine truth. Mm. And it's completely dependent on whether I'm humble. Mm. They are the only things that it's dependent mm. upon. Yeah. It is not dependent upon any religious observance. It is not dependent on any religious faith. Mm. I can be a New Age, Mormon, Christian, Jehovah Witness, uh, Pentecostal, uh, Muslim, Hindu, any religious faith, mm. or an agnostic, or yeah. even an atheist. Yeah, 
Yeah. Right. And have an, have a longing for God all, all of a sudden, and then bang, yeah. the experience yeah. will be experienced. So, what this says is that it's the personal relationship with God that is the key part to the to the whole experience. But what we do when we're a member of a faith is we believe the faith has helped me to have this relationship. And then we continue to engage the sacraments and belief systems and, and doctrines of that faith as a result. Now, many of these doctrines are opposite mm. to God's love. And so these doctrine, doctrines begin to stagnate our soul's mm. progress towards God in love. And so what we do is we had these initial beautiful experiences which slowly over time peter out into having no experience at all. Then we assume one of two things. We either assume we've reached the pinnacle mm. of what we could reach. It's a pretty dead end, isn't it, if you feel like that at the pinnacle? <laughs> exactly. It also, it also negates the fact that God is infinite. Yeah, if of, you think course, about it. of so, course. So there is no such thing as reaching the pinnacle. Or we believe that we've now become stagnant in that faith and we start to look for another faith. Mm. And uh, we look for some other you mm. know, way of mm. getting the same experience, mm. in other words. Mm. Now, the reality is that if we truly understood what caused the experience in the beginning, then it's highly unlikely we'd, we'd be attracted to constant ritual and sacrament. But usually when we begin our relationship with God, we don't understand much at all. Mm. And so we do engage the ritual. That opens our heart, opens our heart to the experience. We have the experience and then we believe it's the ritual mm. or the sacrament or the doctrine or the belief system that mm. caused the experience mm. when it wasn't. It was actually our heart mm. opening for the first time mm. towards God and God's love being experienced that caused the experience. Yeah. And this is where I see like there's no harm in the sacrament and the ritual as long as it doesn't interfere with our knowledge of sure. what is the real reason why we had the experience. Sure. But as soon as it interferes in the knowledge of what is the real reason, now there is harm mm. in the sacrament and the mm. ritual. So mm. this is a, a conundrum, I suppose, for most religious faiths. Mm. You know, the Muslim religion has the ritual of five times every day praying in, in, in a certain direction. And at the beginning, the first person who did that might have experienced some of God's love. But uh, many of them now uh, have the prayer and pick up a gun and go off and, yeah. <laughs> and fire it at someone the very next moment. Mm. Um, so that, that's an indication that none of God's love has touched their heart. Um, so, you know, um, I just feel quite strongly that it's very important for us to understand that while ritual and sacrament and doctrine and belief systems can open us at some point towards this experience with God, they will not sustain the openness okay. with this experience with God. Mm. And that's why the people end up with this dry feeling mm. in the end or the feeling of stagnation, mm. let's call it. And the feeling of stagnation is telling you that your belief about how it happened in the first place was probably incorrect. Mm. The, there is a way to sustain receiving divine love for the rest of your existence, and that is by engaging humility, truth, and the desire for God's love to enter the soul without needing sacrament and ritual to sustain it. It's wonderful, that information, because when you think of, hum when you think of the, some of the feelings that you have when you are humble, to give you a bit of confidence to keep going and sort of thinking, oh, no, I feel terrible, I've got to back out. You keep going, keep going, because it's only going to increase that connection you have with God and exactly. you're keeping that heart open. Exactly. Yeah. The, the beauty of developing the things that we mentioned to develop in mm. question number two of this mm. session um, it can, it are innumerable. And, and also uh, it is so in, important that we understand that these practices are far more important as heartfelt desires than they are as just a rote of course. practice. And, and the same applies to prayer. Prayer that comes from your mind rises no higher than your head. <laughs> and uh, prayer that comes from your heart mm. gets to God's heart. Mm. And, and this is the things we need to understand about God is God re is constantly responding to the, the soul of humanity mm. individually, mm. to each individual person's mm. soul. God's not responding to the ritual. Do you think it matters to God whether you get baptised or not? Do you think it matters to God whether you get married in a church or mm. not? Do you think it matters to God whether you take, you know, the bread and the wine every week or not? You know, 
Do you think it matters to God? Any of those things, in fact, any sacrifice you may make for God doesn't really matter. What matters is your desire mm. for God, your love of God and God's ways, mm. your desire for truth, and your desire to keep absorbing the new things that God has to teach you. Mm. They are the things that matter to God. Mm. That's what establishes a real relationship. It's like you and I, you know, if, if we just had a ritual every week that we went and had a, had a bucket of chips down at, <laughs> down at our local... Down at Utopia. <laughs> <laughs> And there was no heart in it. We just mm. made an arrangement that you rock mm. up, I rock up. We don't spend any time knowing each other the mm. rest of the time. Mm. We don't get to know each other. We just say, oh, how are you? You're all right. How am I? I'm all right. <laughs> you know, we have our chips and scoff them down and go off. And would you consider that in the end a very meaningful relationship? Mm. Probably not. Mm. And, and the reality is God doesn't consider those kind of relationships meaningful at all either. Mm. Mm. What God considers meaningful is when we, through the exercise of our will that mm. God has given us freely mm. to exercise how we wish, decide on our own back, without any influence from anybody else mm. and without any pressure from anybody else, we decide on our own back that we want a relationship with God. God's heart leaps with joy mm. at such, mm. at, at, at our own contemplation of mm. that. Because the thing that is not God's is our, is our will. Mm. And the thing that is not God is, is, is our soul. Mm. God has given us the soul and the will to use how we see fit. And when we decide to enter this desirable relationship with God that we, through our own will, decide to enter, God's heart just leaps for joy because mm. another one of his children has decided for no other reason than God they want to, mm. that they want to have a relationship with their parent. Mm. Mm. Uh, it's brilliant. Yeah, it is <laughs> Thank brilliant. you. God's a clever God. <laughs> God, God is very, also very precise mm. in everything God does. That's what I love about God too, this precision that it involves everything. God doesn't let us get away with intellectual reasoning that has no heart. Mm. God's not like that. People are like that. Mm. Facade is okay with people, mm. but facade cannot cannot ever be okay with God and will not ever mm. be okay with God. Mm. Mm.